but how many people right now are holding their breath for what's next? When's the next news conference and the press conference? And when's the next time we're going to have an update? When's the next time my kid's going to leave me alone and quit talking to me? When's the next time my significant other is going to go out of the house so that I can be alone? Like we're all holding our breath for this next thing. So it's so unknown. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with my job tomorrow? I like, I, I'm sure as an entire collective world right now, we're all holding our breath for what's going to happen. And it sounds like just, you know, a, a figurative thing, but literally if people are listening right now, like, and you stop and you're like, when's the last time I took a deep breath? Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunsaker, joined by my co-host, Terry Ann Trevenin. And we also have a very special guest today, Valerie Genghis. Valerie is going to share with us five tips for surviving the stress of COVID-19, being stuck at home. She is a meditative coach to Oprah and her entire team. So you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this episode. Terry, why don't you go ahead and read us Valerie's bio real quick. Valerie Gingis is a transformational speaker, life coach, and author of Enlightenment is Sexy, Every Woman's Guide to a Magical Life. She specializes in helping people make radical shifts in their self-perception to gain a deeper understanding of who they are so they can genuinely thrive and unleash their magic more fully into the world. Growing up outside Chicago, Illinois, Valerie had an interest in the mysteries of the world and a strong drive to connect with the universe, which she inherited from her mother, who was a poet, former nun, and a major influence in Valerie's life. Valerie received her bachelor's degree in theology and women's studies from DePaul University and earned her master's degree in transpersonal psychology and certification in leadership and life coaching at Sophia University in Palo Alto. Due to a lot of different turning points in her life, she learned about transcendental meditation. And in her first meditation, she says, my entire life radically changed in 20 minutes. The spiritual awakening she experienced was a foundational shift and a powerful transformation in both her awareness and her life. Hence the name of her upcoming podcast, which is Everything You Think You Know Is Wrong, which by the way, I love that title. The David Lynch Foundation hired Valerie to give talks about the benefits of meditation and developing consciousness within corporations, including respected advertising and financial firms, private practices, and student groups at top schools around the country, such as Loyola University and School of Medicine. She, even, she eventually began working directly with Oprah Winfrey and her staff at Harpo Studios. And for two years, she talked to groups of Oprah's staff members about meditation and consciousness. So Valerie knows her stuff and she's respected in the industry. She currently lives in the San Francisco Bay Area where she is a transformational life coach to clients across the nation. She's also writing her upcoming book about how to create radical transformation in your life, which she plans to launch sometime this year. She's also passionate about philanthropic pursuits. Valerie sponsors a young lady in Nepal through Shanti Children's Foundation, is a donor to Charity Seeds, and is currently on the advisory board of the David Lynch Foundation in Chicago. So Valerie, we are super thrilled to have you here today. Obviously a wealth of experience and background and information. My first question for you today is, how did you really come to be at this point in your life? Clearly from a young age, some of this was a seed that was planted, but it's not just planting that seed. Things happen in our lives to really drive us to where we want to go and what we're passionate about, where we want to be. What did that look like for you? What really pushed you into this aspect of your life and helping people in this way? Um, the big turning point in my life was when I lost my mom. I had such a close relationship with her and I always did have a real interest in spirituality and religions of the world and all of that. And she was kind of my confidant in this secret world that I had because I didn't have a lot of people to talk to about these types of mysteries in the world. So she was my person. And when she died, I lost it. It was like my breaking point, which I believe all of us have a breaking slash turning point in our lives. And for me, it was losing my mom. So when she passed away, um, I just, I couldn't see any point in living without her. That's how like connected we were. And I became suicidal. I wasn't working. I wasn't functioning. And someone suggested that I learn to meditate. Um, I had a really bad sleeping disorder, probably from you know, all the anxiety I was feeling. 
And he suggested that I learn to meditate and that would help me get some sleep, which then everything would get a little bit better. Well, it did way more than just help me get some sleep. I, um, with TM, the transcendental meditation, you're taught by an instructor. It takes four days. It's about an hour and a half each day. And the first day in, you're given a mantra. So it's a sound that you follow. And that's what allows you to be able to meditate easily. And so she gave me my mantra. I closed my eyes. And it's like I dove into this deep, deep area inside of myself that I didn't even know existed. And it was so peaceful and so silent. And it felt like I was just like in a warm ocean. And when I came out of it and I opened my eyes, I felt like I had um, woken up in a new reality. I did not feel suicidal or depressed. I felt immense joy and mental clarity. And um, from that day forward, everything changed for me. So that's like really where the whole story began. And I always like to say my experience, I think is a little bit unusual. I. I don't think just because you learn how to meditate or you do yoga or something like that, you're going to have an experience that in one hour, your whole life changes, but it can happen. And it did happen to me. Awesome. And I actually think that I actually think for a lot of people, um, a big turning point does impact them dramatically. And they realize there's a lot of things in my life that matter more than I thought they did. There's a lot within myself that I can do for myself that I didn't realize I could do. And I don't think it's sometimes I don't think it's just this like massive thing for everyone, but I think we all go through hard things that push us to realize like, I can do more, I can be more, there's things that I can do. And so I think a lot of people can resonate with your story. You know, nobody is exempt from really hard things happening in their lives. No one is exempt from that. It's, it's part of the gig, you know, it's how we learn, it's how we grow, it's how we expand. And I think I kind of knew that before, but it wasn't until like I completely was broken that I realized like this is a path to God or a path to awakening that much pain because it really pushes you to change everything even if you're not realizing it in the moment it, it changes you no doubt to be that broken and it, again it, that doesn't have to be the route but it usually i can see now from all the studying i've done and people i've talked to it's usually a divorce or a bankruptcy or something major that happens in a person's life that really catapults them into a new beginning yeah Absolutely. Yeah, it, it definitely happened with me. I mean, I know when I found out that my girlfriend was pregnant with our oldest daughter at the time, like that was the wake up call that I needed to quit smoking and start exercising and then found running. And so for me, like this running was this magical thing and has since evolved to other things, whether that's weightlifting or eating or all kinds of stuff. But I think, I think often people find a turning point. I think there's going to be a lot of people that find a turning point right now while Absolutely. we're stuck here in quarantine. We've got, you know, the COVID-19 scares and People are realizing, wait, I've, you know, I've just been neglecting myself, thinking everything would be fine and dandy. Because a month and a half ago, we weren't ending our emails saying, stay healthy, stay safe. Right. Right? People would have thought you're insane if that's how you're ending all of your emails to your friends right. and loved ones. But do you, I don't know that I've sent an email lately that didn't say that at the end. And so, right. you know, and, and this is why it's a very timely conversation with you, um, because I think this is uh, going to be a turning point for a lot of people. But I think it's also a very stressful time. For a lot of people and i know that you released a blog post that talked about um five ways for staying calm during the pandemic and that's what i really want to talk to you about today because i think there's a lot of people listening um that could use this information and use the knowledge that you have to share okay and before we get into the five ways i think what you just said is so important never again are we probably going to have this amount of time that we're able to stay home really think about our lives, think about what we want, who we are, what we want to do next. This is such an opportunity. And if you can turn it around in your mind and look at it as an opportunity and a chance to go inward, I think you can really have a new perspective on what's happening because it's being forced upon us to bring in this silence and stay home and be quiet. And that's the best time to make big changes and get perspective on your life. So- well, let me ask you a question too, because I think for me, and I've had some big turning points in my life that shifted my entire life similar to you. And, you know, do you feel like 
in all the work that you've done and really connecting with yourself more, which I think is really key to success in future um, struggles that you might face or turning points that you might face, do you feel like it's become easier for you going through what you went through with losing your mom, which is such a, a horrific thing to have to go through? And then, you know, everything that's come after that in your life, do you feel like the work you've done has prepared you now when other things happen, now when things come up in your life, that you're more able to handle them and more equipped to handle them. How would you, you know, how would you say you feel on that aspect of your life and moving forward now after that experience? That's a great question because that is one of the major changes I saw in my life. I could handle unbelievably stressful situations. I mean, I've buried eight family members, including my brother, since my mom died and how I've handled their deaths and helping care for them and being there for them has been completely different than how I handled my mom's death. Of course, I was there for her, but I was destroyed when she died. Now it feels like I'm stronger. I have more perspective on what's happening. I feel like I understand death, which is huge. And I feel like um, I'm balanced. My nervous system, my mind, everything stays pretty steady, Eddie. And I'm able to ride the waves that come at me in life because I understand now that's never going to end. Like we're going to have good times. We're going to have bad times. And I'm kind of able to just stand back, watch what's happening, decide what I need to do in the moment and just keep going. It doesn't take me down like it used to. So yeah, yeah I'm much stronger. And um, that has been a, a beautiful gift that has been given to me. Yeah. I think this concept, you know, that you talk about with meditation and connecting to your power within really expanding the universe for yourself and allowing things to teach you and move you forward and propel you. I think where people miss the mark sometime, and even as we're about to talk about COVID-19 and how it's impacted everyone, I think something so unique about what you shared and learning more about you is that you have to use those moments to change you and change your perspective in order for them to really be fulfilling and meant to be what they're supposed to be for you in your life. Right. And so it's like, I love hearing you say that because here you've gone through this incredibly hard thing. It's changed your life. And it's like now every situation you hit, everything you look at, you step back and you're like, I've been here before. Every time something bad happens, it's the same. How am I going to tackle this? And the very thing you talk about and teach people connecting with yourself has allowed you to see your world in such a different way. And I think it's such an important concept for people. So let's talk about COVID-19. And in a time when there's so much chaos, what are you seeing from people? Because obviously you practice this, you work with people, you're coaching people. What are you seeing from people in the world right now that you're experiencing? I think a lot of people have already personally had like a big scare in their life. And now they're seeing it like, it's not on the micro level, it's on the macro level. So it's like the whole world is experiencing it once experiencing it once, but there's something familiar about it and people that have gone through trials and tribulations in their life, I think they're recognizing that, you know, like, wait, I've had this feeling already where I've been terrified and confused and everything seems messed up. And so they have a little bit of um, an understanding of how to handle it. Now, if you have had net, if you've never had an experience like this, it's very shocking. So I've talked to people that are completely freaking out. You know, they're not handling it that well. And then there's people on the other side of the spectrum that will tell me, you know, I was built for this. Like I can do this. This is, this is happening and I'm going to deal with it. So I think it all depends on your history, um, how much work you've done on yourself, knowing who you are and what you can handle. All those things come into play when something major like this happens. And you can see it, how people are taking care of themselves. You know, like as soon as this started unfolding, I thought I have to stop drinking coffee. I really need to eat right, take all my supplements, you know, really be on track. And then you have the other side of the spectrum where, you know, people are drinking a ton of booze at night or, you know, smoking pot or whatever they're doing. And really that doesn't help you. Yeah, just yeah. Bad habits. you think it's comfort, but really it's just creating more of an issue while you're trying to handle the world that's around you right now. 
Right. Well, I, I think there's different stresses that people are experiencing too. I think there's some people that are stressed around actually getting coronavirus and COVID-19 and maybe they're older or they're less healthy. And so that's their fear. There's yeah. other people who are stressed about, they don't have a job right now because everything's closed down. They're not as worried about the virus, but they're worried about the money situation. Then you have other people that maybe are able to work, but they're at home and their kids are with them all day and they're stressed having to become teachers all of a sudden, as well as being, you know, staying parents and still working. And, you know, and so I think this is, this is hitting so many people from several different angles and there's likely stress being experienced on some level, whether it's the health scare, whether it's a financial scare, whether it's just being stuck at home and you can't go outside and get the fresh air you're used to getting, you can't go to the gym and get the release you're used to getting or uh, all of those many things. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely in a pressure cooker and we're all facing, you know, pretty big challenges. And I just think that's the way. I mean, the way the universe or God, whatever you want to say, got to me was to take the one thing away from me, which was my mom that I was super attached to. So for the next person, it might be their career and that's their identity. You know, I am a lawyer, or I am a surgeon. And if that gets ripped away from you, well, you're in for a carnival ride of change. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree with Jonathan more. I think that this is such an uncertain time and everybody's like, this could happen and this could happen. And it's different for everybody. And it's new curveballs for everyone, whether your kids are home all the time now and you're trying to work and do kids or whatever, you're afraid to go out because you may have a really big risk of getting sick and, and having it impact you in a more significant way. So I think there's all these things. You know, you mentioned caffeine. And you talk about, I love what you said, put the Starbucks or Diet Cokes down, people. That was the first decision I made. I was like, wait a second, I'm feeling a little bit anxious. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to like drink coffee all day and make it work. I'm worse. It was, it felt obvious to me, like cut out the stimulants. Yeah. If you're already feeling anxious, like don't add fuel to the fire. Yeah. There's so much stimulation around us right now. News, social media, fear, kids talking to you. If you have kids at home all the time, you're with yeah. your family all the time. You don't think about these things as like stimulation to your body in that sense, but it totally is. And I think you're, anything you're adding to that intentionally can be really hard. I think it's a really good time to start new habits, right? Too. 100%. Yep. You're, if you have the time, you're at home, you're super aware of your body and your mind and your nervous system, you can pay attention to hey, I just ate that sandwich. I, I don't know, I feel I don't feel that good after eating it and take a little note. You know, I've changed my eating habits a lot just from paying attention because it became more painful to, the. if the pleasure was there to let's say eat a croissant, I'm, I'm gluten intolerant, but I didn't know it. It's like the pain that came after it just didn't make it worth it anymore. But it was only until I started paying attention to the supplements I was taking, to the food I was eating, to my alcohol and caffeine intake, all those things, I had to figure out what was right for me. And this is a good time for people to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it goes along with one of the other things that you talk to people about. You are what you eat. You're talking about the supplements that you take, your routines, your regimens, you know, cutting certain things out. And, you know, talk about that a little bit in your perspective, because we, we've shared plenty of times on this podcast how important it is to eat healthy, but you work with people every day. You're coaching people every day. What are, your, what are you seeing and what are some of your tips you'd give to people around making some of those changes when it comes to what you're putting in your body? I mean, I think first of all, the person has to realize like, I'm not feeling good, something is wrong, something is off, and they have to make the decision like, I wanna change, I wanna do it a different way. So that's like step one. And then again, paying attention to what you're putting in your body and how you feel afterwards. And the third thing I've noticed, like I've been cooking at home every day now, and I feel so much better and I realized how much I was eating out all the time. So not only have I been saving money, but my health is better. So there's been something really beautiful about taking the time to plan out a meal, you know, cooking it yourself. And I kind of turned like my cooking time into a meditation. So that's been very helpful to me. And I, I believe that there's energy in your food and the energy that you're putting into it while you're cooking that you're taking it in, your body feels it, it's, it's real. So if you're happy while you're cooking, you throw on some music and you, it's something to look forward to, I think that could be nothing but a good thing for you. Sure, absolutely. I love that you say that too, because I, 
I couldn't agree more. I think that food is such a critical component of our overall well being. We're eating food constantly, it fuels our body. So, our relationship with it, our attitude towards it, the way we prepare it, cook it, the type of nutrition plan that we're on to support our body, I think it's such an important point of what we're putting into our body. And supporting your mind, you know, like food can make you feel, give you anxiety or it can make you feel calm. You can use it as a tool. Absolutely. So these are all really cool things to know about yourself, you know, and how to keep yourself balanced and healthy. And I do think when you start experiencing these changes in your life, you automatically lean, you know, on the healthy side or lean towards making good decisions for yourself because you know, you have a lot of self-respect and, and you're, you care about how you feel. You want it all to be working right. So I think that really starts that chain of events when you start having um, major shifts in your life. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, just like what we're putting into our body and you talk about preparing your food and the energy around your food, I think a lot of us right now could be feeding ourselves stress too, like going to the emotional side of what we feed ourselves And another concept that you talk a lot about is breathing. And what I love about what you share when it comes to breathing is not just, well, just do the breathing and you'll feel better, but how it really impacts our body. So talk a little bit more about that. We know that we're supposed to breathe. Everybody talks about breathing. Breathe in and you'll feel better. And it does make you feel better. But what are the whys behind it and why you recommend it to people? Well, I'm no stranger to panic attacks. And I realized at some point down the road that like, when I'd have an anxiety attack, I wasn't breathing like at all. You just, you're holding your breath, you're holding everything in because you're freaking out. And just the reminder to just breathe, which is so easy, deep breaths, you will be shocked how fast you can like, you know, squash that anxiety. And it's something easy and natural, but it's something you need to remind yourself because in the moment, if you're feeling really stressed out, you just, stop breathing. You're not, you're not taking oxygen in properly. So just the idea of reminding yourself over and over again, breathe, breathe, and you will see that you will start feeling better when you start taking deep breaths in. And it's easy. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a big big thing that most people don't really recognize. And I, it's interesting. I smoked for 20 years and Mm -hmm. I actually think one of the calming uh, actions from smoking is the deep breathing that comes from smoking. Now, given you're also ingesting poisons and all kinds of other stuff, so I don't advocate for it, but I definitely can relate to the relaxing sensation. Mm -hmm. So eliminating the cigarettes and just doing the deep breathing, you still get that same feeling. You still get that same relaxation that comes from it. You do. And it's so, it's kind of cool when you think about it because you're just breathing, but it works and it's easy and it's just a great reminder. When you start spinning out of control, the first thing you do is start taking deep breaths. And I think uh, it's a good way to pull yourself out of a tailspin. When I think, I mean, with our kids around all the time and all of that, I think all of our fuses are probably a little shorter than they're usually. Um, Our our tensions are higher. The stress is high. And we've always heard since a kid, like stop and count to 10 before you respond or before you freak Mm -hmm. out. But really that count to 10 is like taking time to breathe. And that's really, and I know for myself, I can tell if I'm too short with my daughters or I pop off or it's been a long day and I haven't had much sleep. It's because I'm holding so much tension Mm -hmm. and just breathing alone will instantly release it. I'm with you. Yeah. Well, how, many, how many people right now, you know, if, if you're listening, like you stop and ask yourself the question, how long have you been holding your breath without breathing? Yeah. You know, subconsciously we all breathe. Like it just happens. Our brain just automatically does that. It's an automatic response that our body does as a living, breathing human being. But how many people right now are holding their breath for what's next? When's the next news conference and the press conference and When's the next time we're going to have an update? When's the next time my kid's going to leave me alone and quit talking to me? When's the next time my significant other is going to go out of the house so that I can be alone? Like we're all holding our breath for this next thing because it's so unknown. What's going to happen with my job tomorrow? I like, I, I'm sure as an entire collective world right now, we're all holding our breath for what's going to happen. And it sounds like just, you know, a figurative thing, but literally if people are listening right now, like, and you stop and you're like, when's the last time I took a deep breath right? and then let everything go, just let it out. And I catch myself constantly right now. Like I'm really tense and I didn't realize it until now. And I've been holding this tension all day. And you know, listen, everyone is nervous. 
there's so much stress in the air, in the collective, there's no way we couldn't feel each other. You know, it's affecting you, especially if you're a little bit sensitive. And it's like that much stress in the air, that much stress in the news. And it's just everywhere. You can't get away from it. So also recognizing like, is this my stress or is that, is it their stress? Because yeah. we're, we share the same energy. And if everyone is freaking out, you're going to be affected by it. So it's good to just keep that in mind and, you know, give yourself a break because it's difficult. Yeah. I think there, I think you're so right. I think there's a collective energy of stress and I, I agree with you. I think energy is a very, very real thing. And I think, you know, even when you have to make your trip to the grocery store, go out and you're like with all these people, you know, being there this week, you feel that tension from everyone. Oh, people are like <laughs> diving away oh, from you. Yes. Yes, it's not Fair. you can literally feel people's worry. You can feel their yeah. concern. I understand it's legitimate. I'm not advocating for get close to your neighbor in the grocery store and whatever. Do what you need to do to be safe and healthy, but you can feel that collective energy. It's a different feeling when you walk into a store. It's a different feeling even when you're driving, and you like see someone in their car. It's like almost like you can just feel that tension. And it's like, what would it be like if the entire world just took a deep breath because I know I'm always like god if everyone just like meditated ate well and got some exercise we'd be living in a new world yes we would I like to keep it simple because to me it's not that complicated it's like do what makes you feel good and, and keep doing it it's like recognize you know hey this isn't good for me or this is really good for me and just do that thing I know it's easier said than done but I do think you get to the point where you can't take it anymore and you do take your health seriously i mean uh, we all want to feel good and calm yeah so sure. you got to make decisions and i know you've mentioned meditation and i want to get to that in a second i want to spend a little bit of time on that before we do let's talk about the fourth thing in your five steps and that's just kind of eliminating the booze probably even the pot some of the other stuff so can you talk on that for just a second yeah i mean listen i love having a glass of wine with dinner it's you know i'm greek that's what i've been doing my whole life but um, I noticed immediately when this whole thing started, it was like on social media and everywhere I was turning, you know, people making jokes or drinking all the time. And I kept thinking to myself, that's not going to work out for you because it's such a, it's so hard on your nervous system and your body to drink that much alcohol. That just adds more stress and confusion to the situation. And even, I mean, doing anything in excess, it's, it's just, it's not healthy and it's not going to help you get through this easily. Well, I mean, it's an escape, right? So everybody wants to escape the reality of what's going on. Let me escape from being stuck at home. Let me escape from not having my job right now. And so the drinking allows you to escape that. Smoking weed allows you to escape that. But Doing there really is no escape. There is no escape. I mean, really- <laughs> The only way out is through. Exactly. Okay. The only, and that's exactly what I was gonna say, is the only, th the only way to, to deal with this is to face it. And then have techniques to actually face it, like deep breathing, like eating healthy, like doing all of that. And that's the only way, because drinking is not going to make it go away. It's just going to send you further and further down into the hole that you'll still have to climb out of eventually anyway. Exactly. I mean, that is perfect what you said. There's no escaping this. And again, it's what's happening in the collective now happens to all of us in our personal lives at some point or another. And I know from history, like, you know, drinking a couple of bottles of wine is not going to make things better or go away, maybe for the moment, but God, it's so much worse than the next day. You got to face it. And if that means going to therapy, keeping a journal, picking up a meditation practice or yoga or whatever you want to do, anything to keep yourself sane, to be able to get through these hard times, then do it. Absolutely. Well, you know, you talked about in your life, it, this goes back to something we were talking about earlier, it's really hard in times of stress and chaos to face yourself, to really open up and be like, all right, why am I behaving this way when I know like I could take the power and control back if I wanted to, but it's just easier to go to the booze, to the escape. It makes it feel better, but this is a really good time. You know, people who are listening and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying, but this makes me feel better. This would be a really good time. As we talked about changing those habits, what are things that, you really connect with? What are things that you really love and having time to actually do those things and reconnecting with those, replace those habits that aren't serving you with things that will serve you and connect with yourself in ways that you haven't before. You know, you talked about that 
you know, in, in going through the experience with your mom and really having to dig deep and open yourself up, this is a time to not go within, but open up exactly like you talk about. And I think this speaks to meditation, which I'm really excited to talk to you about today, because this is something that you specialize in. Tell us a little bit about meditation and how that can really help you to connect with yourself again, connect with your own power, connect with being able to open yourself up in ways maybe that you haven't before that can help people actually get through this. I mean, there's a whole world inside of us that I think not everyone is familiar with, with because we were not, I mean, I was not taught to like meditate every day when I was younger, sit in silence, bring, bring that silence into your life. That everything that I was taught was external, you know, do well in school, work hard at your job, push yourself, be the best. But really, when you turn your attention inward, and meditation is an easy and perfect way to do it, there's a whole world inside of you. All of a sudden, you begin to have gifts you didn't know you had. I mean, I was never a writer. I was never a speaker. This all happened after I learned to meditate. Doors started opening for me, and all I had done was go inward every day, 20 minutes, twice a day. I made it a habit. I never missed it. I just did it because I could see that my outside world was starting to match what was happening inside of me. And things became easier. I was able to handle things better. More opportunities came my way. And that's when I started making the connection like, wow, this kind of, this gives you an edge in life to have a practice like this. And so that's all I needed to see. I mean, I just kept like following my destiny after that. Um, and it was all from bringing some silence into my life. It was such a game changer. Yeah. And that's why I talk about it all the time because it's something that's easy that we can all do. So where would you, somebody that wants to get into meditation or maybe they've tried meditation and haven't been as successful at it. Um, I know I've tried meditation many times and it seems like the noise just gets louder sometimes. Uh, guided meditation is what ends up working well for me. Where would you direct people? Where, what, what advice would you give somebody who wants to try meditation or has not been as successful in the past? So I practice transcendental meditation and all the people that I've worked with and um, talked to, they, you know, I watch them all learn TM. And most people would say to me, I don't think I can meditate. Like I've tried before, I can't do it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you just wait. And so every person that I've come in contact with, after they've learned TM, they're able to meditate because it's really, it's very simple. And I like that it's, that you're taught. So like you have um, really clear directions on how to do this. And so uh, the best place to learn um, about TM is tm.org. Um, you can find a teacher on the website near you. And like I said, it's about 90 minutes for four days in a row. And then for the rest of your life, you can go to any TM center, have your meditation checked, do group meditations. Um, you're, you're in the organization. It's kind of like a lifetime membership once you uh, learn. So it's great to meditate with other people. It's really powerful. And I just think it's a super easy practice. Excellent. So now Valerie, Help me understand, do you work with people directly now or do you not do as much one-on-one? -on -one? How can people find you and find more information about you? I do one-on-one. -on -one. I do it all through Zoom, actually. It's on because there's people that I work with all over the country. Um, they can find me at my website. It's just ValerieGangus.com. Excellent. Let me ask uh, you a question. Just, sure. I want to take the meditation you know, one or two steps further. You know, when it comes to people meditating for the first time, I mean, obviously Jonathan touched on some of the things that are really hard for him, but like what are the top one or two things that people usually use when you're working with people as an excuse? Like, I can't do this. I'm never going to be successful at this. Like we can always talk about like, you know, start meditation this way and it can look like this. And I think it's all great, but like, what are some of the, you know, one to three top hangups that people have when they're like sitting here listening today and they're like, well, I would like to do meditation and I've tried it. I can do the basics, but what are some of those things that people just really get caught up in that keep them from being able to get into that meditative practice? I mean, I think the number one thing I've heard is I don't have time. And I'm like, you do. <laughs> like, so TM, they suggest that you meditate twice a day, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes, you know, five, six o'clock at night, late afternoon, early evening. And I'm always like, you have, you de we all definitely have 40 minutes in the day to meditate. And what I have found is 
since I started meditating, which it's been uh, nine and a half years now, I feel like I have more time because I'm way more efficient. So if I have to get stuff done, it's like my mind is just like, boom, 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 boom. I just get it done now. There's not a lot of stress connected to it. So it's like I've expanded time in my life through slowing down. And I know that's not like intuitive, but it really does work that way. So I always tell people just start meditating and watch what happens. You become more resilient. You become more effective. Uh, you learn easier. You seem to retain more information. And it's all because everything is more calm within. So saying like, I don't have the time. It's, I believe it's just because they haven't had the experience yet of actually stretching time. Sure. Well, and not even just the stretching time. I mean, we find time for things that are important to us. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you got to start there. You have to make, you know, a, a commitment to yourself. Like, I'm going to really give this a chance. And then I think uh, what begins to just unfold in your life is enough proof to you that, like, yes, this is working. This is working. So yeah, that's the number one thing I hear. And I know it's different for a lot of people, but I mean, help help others understand that it's they're not going to find enlightenment on the very first, you know, no session of meditating like what's a good commitment to make is it a good commitment to say you know what I'm gonna do this for 30 days 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the evening do they only needed to do it for seven days I mean what would be your minimum commitment for them to really start feeling something I know it's different for everybody but oh, I, think I can't imagine you wouldn't feel something in 30 days I mean there's if you meditated every day twice a day for 30 days I feel like you'd be looking at a new life yeah and for a lot of us we're gonna be stuck at home for at least 30 more days so you definitely have the time to start meditating now. This is like, this is a great time um, to learn. And I think, I want to say the TM teachers might be doing it online. I'm not 100% sure about that. But uh, any type of meditation practice, that's just what I do. But dabbling in it from now while you have the time, and that's what we were talking about, this is a great time to make big changes and really look at your life. And bringing in a spiritual practice like that, that's a game changer. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because in that concept, that concept of people not making time, one of the things that people ask me all the time is how do you schedule your life? Because I like to get a lot of things done. And one of the things I tell them is it's okay for the first thing to schedule in your life to be you and the things yeah. that you do. And a lot of people are like, I can't make time for that. Yeah, you really can. Just like you schedule meetings on your calendar, just like you schedule all these things in your life, schedule time for what you need to do. I have a lot of people who are like, you always get up so early. Don't you want to sleep more? And I'm like, no, because in the early morning hours, no one's talking to me. No one's texting me. No mm -hmm. one's calling me. I meditate in the morning. I love to meditate in the morning and just close my eyes and let go of everything and find the time that works for you, you know? And I, like, I just, I agree with you. I think that people make excuses of like, I don't have time for this, but you do have time for it. If you schedule time for it, we live in a society where we've been taught, like it's all about other people and being busy and don't be about you and don't be selfish. And it's like, no, be selfish. Be, be selfish. Be selfish. Cause you will end up helping way more people than you could ever imagine. Absolutely. Um, you have more empathy when you're softer inside you have a desire to help others it's like everything just becomes more calm and you become more yourself and i believe all of us are built to help one another and to be loving and to be giving i think the anger and the violence and all that that's coming from stress so if you can really calm down your system i think you naturally are just a kinder more giving person you will just evolve into that without you doing anything yeah yep disconnecting from all those stressors i couldn't agree with you more yeah i love this i think it's just such a an important time in the world right now to really connect with yourself and I think meditation is a beautiful way to do that. I love that this is your message and this is what you're sharing. And we could certainly look at the experience of life right now as a negative and say, well, mm -hmm. this is the worst thing that could ever happen to us. But we could also look at it and say, this is the best thing that could ever happen to us because look exactly. at this to, to improve. Exactly. And, and um, it feels really good to feel that way and think that way because I'm just looking at it as another opportunity. Because that's how I look at all the messed up things that happen in my life. 
Um, yep. It's just another opportunity. Here we go again. And yep. you know what? In a couple months, everything will be okay again. You know, it's just, it, that's how life is. Bad things happen. It doesn't stay bad forever. And then really good things happen. And we appreciate those good things because of the crap we already went through. So it's, it's just the way it's supposed to be. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Terry ann do you want to wrap it up with your final question that you love asking every guest? I yes, I love to ask my final question to everyone. Valerie, if there's one message, like you had one opportunity to share something with the entire world, what would your message to the world be? Bring silence into your life. Cool. That's rad. I love that answer. Such a good answer. Beautiful. Love it. Valerie, thank you so much for taking time with us today and sharing all your knowledge and experience. For those of you listening, you can find out more about Valerie at ValerieGangas.com. We also have links to her website, to her book at EmpoweringYouOrganically.com. We have all the show notes. We have the transcripts. If you love this episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes. Give us a big thumbs up on YouTube. And thank you for joining us. Valerie, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. And everyone stay healthy. Remember you said you end your emails that way? So I'm ending the podcast that way. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Thank everybody, you. for listening. We'll see you on the next show. Bye. Bye everyone.